What is going on everyone? Nostalgia now to 5 coming at you with another Explaining Digimon Digivolution Land video. I decided to get back to some of the older videos to see if I did not miss on certain unpopular requests. And I found one particular request which was asked by the authors Mitch Michi and Hector Chacon who wanted me to discuss the Digivolution Land of Lalamon, the plant type Digimon. Considering that only two persons asked for it, I am guessing that the Digimon is low on popularity. That is why I will do my best to hype it up and involve the Digimon in other videos to make it a bit more popular. I hope you're going to enjoy this one anyway. Let me first give a shout out to my Patreon supporters Beast, Cameron Donnelly, Heben Bob, Marin Solar, Nathan Jones, Pedro Luis Vico, and Ran Segev. A big thank you for your contribution. And if you guys are new, please make sure to subscribe for more Digimon videos. Trust me on this one, we are really going to go deeper and deeper in the Digimon universe, especially now that I finally have more time available. I am happy to discuss Lalamon because, again, it really feels like this Digimon is overshadowed by other Digimon that obviously get way more attention. Which is why I like to say that it is best that we get lost in the Digimon universe instead of heading straight for a destination, as you'd be more likely to miss on very interesting creatures. To give you some examples of unpopular Digimon we discussed already, are for example Cyclomon, a Digimon we theorized might actually be Gabumon's Digivolution. Or maybe the Chessmon clan, who have plans on making a Chessmon empire, also very interesting. Or maybe the Funbeamon line, who have an entire base called the Royal Base, one we have yet to explore as even this base is a source of great theories which we all grew to love doing, theorizing about Digimon. Now Lalamon is a plant Digimon with the appearance of a flowering bud. This is already a sign that it will end up becoming a beautiful flower. First, it belongs to the Wind Garden family. Members of this field are generally avian or flying Digimon, or those who dwell in grassy or lofty areas. Lalamon can indeed fly by spinning the leaf on its head rapidly. However, it does fly unsteadily. This sort of reminds me of the Biomon video, where we discussed why it is wearing that metallic ring on its ankle. And one of the theories was that it would make it fly unsteadily, but if Biomon were to master flight, it would end up digivolving into those other avian Digimon, like Bergemon. The other family Lalamon belongs to is the Jungle Troopers family. Members of this field are generally insectoid Digimon or vegetation Digimon. Basically, Digimon who dwell in tropical areas. And it does make sense that Lalamon belongs to this family. In fact, I would say that the Digimon is more influenced by this family than it is with the Wind Garden family. All it would take is to look at its appearance, and I believe that it would be pretty clear. And by the way, there is something interesting to its appearance. Despite its charm, it is an expressionless Digimon, meaning that you would have a hard time figuring out whether it is happy or sad or even scared. And there is another Digimon we've already discussed that also has an expressionless face. I'm talking about Togemon, who is Palmon's champion Digivolution. And you will see, we are going to get to the Palmon line in a second, because there are many similarities. Let us jump to Lalamon's champion form called Sunflowmon, clearly a reference to the Sunflower. A flower that got the name because it always turned towards the sun. When Sun Flomon bathed in the sun's light, it will become very energetic. Now, you see, what is very interesting about Digimon and its universe, and its inhabitants, is that there is a great variation when it comes to the environment plant Digimon would deem most suitable for them to maneuver in. In explaining Gadamon Armor Digivolution Land video, we discussed a mutant Digimon called Kabukimon. It also belongs to the same jungle troopers family as Lalamon, but instead dislikes being under the sun and usually prefers to lie hidden until it's night. Unless we are talking about artificially illuminated spaces. This is a classic example showing that Digimon may belong to the same type and even belong to the same family, but the complexity behind a single creature usually means that these Digimon would differ dramatically. Which is why we need to take our time to discuss them all separately. What's interesting about Sunflowmon is that it does not belong to the Wind Garden family anymore, only the jungle troopers. And only on days when the weather is good, it will flap the leaves on its back to fly around. Other than that, it will probably remain grounded, confirming that the jungle trooper influence was simply much greater than was the Wind Garden's influence. Its ultimate form is called Lilamon, a fairy Digimon, inspired by the lilac, a flower that, well, at least in the language of flowers, symbolizes the first emotions of love, that is, when it has a purplish kind of color. 
When I first heard of Lilamon, I immediately had to think of Lilimon, Palmon's ultimate level Digimon. I was surprised to see the similarities. They are both fairy type Digimon, Digivolved from a plant like Digimon. I would be very pleased to discuss both of them together in a similar video to pay homage to the plant type Digimon, as I've always had the feeling that plant type creatures in various media are always less popular. Lilamon's appearance is that of a beautiful feminine teenage Digimon that is considered pure and innocent. And that is not the same as Lilimon, who has the appearance of a human child with a rather whimsical, tomboyish personality. The thing that should make you fear Lilamon, maybe even more than Lilimon, is that despite giving us the impression that it is indeed pure and innocent, it is said that Lilamon governs over death and rebirth. And to best imagine her powers, considering that she belongs to the jungle troopers, chances are probably elevated that would only find it in tropical areas like forests, unlike Lilimon who belongs to many other families and thus making it more likely to find it in other ecosystems. And in the Explaining Tentomon Digimon Digivolution Line video, I only briefly talked about how dangerous the Digimon forests truly are. It harbors some of the most powerful and primitive type of Digimon, those who do not really have cognitive abilities and rely only on their primitive instincts. Lilamon looks to me like the type that would bewitch you and make you enter those forests which would ultimately lead you to your doom. She reminds me of the character Spring in the Samurai Jack franchise, a very enigmatic individual that also appears soothing and calm like Lilimon. Well, that was her technique to lure and enchant those who would come near her. And Lilamon on itself has various ways of luring other Digimon, or as far as I know, humans. It can make others instantly fall in love, it can bewitch the opponent by scattering lovely smelling pollen, and aside of the tools it has in its arsenal, Lilamon's leaves are toxic toxic enough to bring death to the opponent. So Lilamon does look like the type that would make you die before you even realize that you are dying. Very interesting. The mega level of Lalamon is called Lotusmon, yet another fairy Digimon. If you already thought that Lilamon kind of looked in some way untouchable with all its way of enchanting others, Lotusmon would actually be more dangerous in its craft. For starters, you just need to take a look at its appearance and tools. First of all, Lotusmon has an appearance like the Lotus, and the Lotus has various meanings depending on your point of reference. According to an article called The Lotus Symbol, its meaning in Buddhist art and philosophy, the author, William E. Ward, claims that for the Buddhists, the Lotus flower is sacred and heavenly. In India and farther India, the Lotus is the all-important symbol of creation. In ancient Egypt, it was a symbol of the sun and of life, and also of immortality and of resurrection. So only with these, Lotusmon is already an embodiment of all these various meanings. This explains why it has a personality worthy of the gods. Its personality is ladylike in its calmness and grace. It also possesses the abilities of making people forget the suffering of this sad world and granting them good dreams. On both hands, Lotusmon holds two staffs, each of which harbors incredible powers. In its left hand, it holds the Caduceus, a staff that in our world history goes way back to 4000 to 3000 before Christ. This takes us back to the Mesopotamian Sumerian god Ningish Zida. But no worries, we are going to discuss this staff in the mythological series, the series where we discuss the mythological inspiration that can be found in the Digimon universe. With the Caduceus, Lotusmon can release a white aura that administers restoration or a black aura that administers devastation. With the other staff, it can release a seven-colored aura that tempts the opponent into a euphoric fantasy world and causes them to completely lose their fighting spirit. Lotusmon embodies a godlike atmosphere and with powers making an opponent lose its fighting spirit is an immense power especially when considering how devastating some Digimon can be. It almost seems to make it close to untouchable, especially with its powers to create illusions. And with strong possibilities to only find Lotusmon in forests, which can be very dangerous for anyone who wanders in it, this Digimon might have a severe advantage on all those who might accidentally cross paths with it. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of another plant type Digimon. I have to say that I'm very impressed with Lotusmon and in fact the entire line of Lalamon. If I were to put this line next to Palmon's line, I might even say that Lalamon's line is really more dangerous. But for that, we'll have to make another specific video and I'm hoping to include your opinions in that video. Oh, and speaking of Palmon, did you know that Lilamon, Lalamon's ultimate, can also digivolve to Rosemon, 
Palmon's mega level. I'm wondering how that's even possible. If anyone has some explanation, know that you are certainly free to use the comment section as you like, as long as you remain polite. Also, if you have certain video requests, like the discussion of certain Digimon or some theory, go ahead. I know there are certain types of Digimon that I have yet to explore, and I'm sure that there are certain types of Digimon that simply are not popular at all, and I think they also deserve a chance to be discussed properly, like all other more popular Digimon, and that's what we are going to do, so I'm hoping to get some guidelines based on your comments. Know that all other videos I have been referring to in this video, like for example Tentamon's video or Fambimon's video, they are all placed in the description box and some are at the end of the video, that way you can check out what have been discussed there. In case you are new, make sure to check out the various Digimon playlists I've made to make it easier for you to catch up on the newer and the older videos, they are always updated. And also, make sure to subscribe to this channel as we're going to make sure to ask all those questions about Digimon which we've always wanted to see answered.